because you can't expect unbelievers to have this because they just don't care about Christ until you meet him. But once you've met him, even then sometimes we don't really have this as the central point of our life, but we should. And when we do, everything starts making sense. Everything gets in the right perspective, falls into the right order. There's a sequence that takes place. Your, your, your way becomes smoother. Your path becomes straighter. It becomes clearer. Your vision becomes clearer. Your mind is not as messed up or entangled with stuff as it, it normally is. All I want is for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Should we pray right now? You know, let, let, let's even say that right now. Let's, let's say it right now to Jesus. You don't need me to pray it for you. You can pray this yourself just for a minute and just say it to him. If this is your desire, your heart, what you really want, say it to him right now. All I want, Lord, is for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Lord, we, we, we love you in this place. We praise you in this place. We're unapologetic about the gospel because it is your gift to humanity for reconciliation, reconstruction, revival, renewal, and all those things. Today in this place, Lord, be with us. Manifest yourself to us. Bless us with your presence. We love you and we thank you. We give you all the glory. Lord, as your word comes forward, I pray our minds are going to be open and that you're going to transform our Christmas into the best one yet. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. It's the first time that I've said that this year. And uh, well, it's not going to be the last time, I'm sure. But before you see it, just turn around. Just tell someone, yep, yeah, Merry Christmas. It's all right. Merry Christmas. And then sit down. Merry Christmas, guys. Because by now, I'm sure you've realized that Christmas is coming. It started in September this year, I think. Um, it goes back and back and back. You know, it becomes stretched right out. But I want to speak to you today about transforming your Christmas. Because I know that many people have different ideas, expectations, and experiences around this season. And uh, in my many years of life, I have had all different types of experiences, expectations uh, around this season. You know, there were many years of my life that I didn't really celebrate Christmas in the way I wanted due to incarceration. Um, there were other times due to incapacitation <laughs> um, from various substances. But here we are today. And I really believe that Christmas can be transformed. Um, and I don't know about you, but how many of you would like your Christmas to be the best one you've ever had? Huh? So I want you to turn in your Bibles. We're just going to open in a scripture in Matthew chapter 1 from verse 18 through 25, which tells us how Jesus was born. How Jesus was born. You never get in the Bible when he was born. You get how he was born, you get where he was born, you get who he was born to, but you never get when he was born. But this tells us how. In verse 18 it says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, didn't want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message for his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up 
He did as the angel of the Lord commanded, took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. This is the traditional story, and as we've seen, it tells us how Jesus came to be. But today I want us to have an honest look at Christmas. Let's have an honest look at Christmas. Because Christmas is thought by most to be a, a wonderful time. It focuses on giving gifts and family togetherness and beautiful music and funky decorations, terrible jumpers, feasting on fowl and turkey is a fowl. Turkey and chicken and beef and lamb and rice and peas and chocolate and mince pud and mince pies and anything, in fact, that you can eat. There comes a point during Boxing Day or, or even Christmas Day when you will eat anything. You, you even eat the cardboard box, anything, anything. You shove it in. Huh? And then there's the singing of Christmas carols and, you know, all of that stuff. And all of this supposedly is centered around the worship of Christ. But I want us to look at three things to dig into three things. Is that all right? Three things, three quick things that are going to help us to transform our Christmas. First of all, the first thing we're going to look at is the problem of Christmas. Then we're going to look at the promise of Christ. And then we're going to look at the possibilities of Christmas. Are you excited? Come on, help me out. At least make me feel like you're excited. Amen. First of all, the problem of Christmas. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't got a problem with Christmas. I'm not a bar humbug sort of guy. However, there are problems associated with Christmas. And I do have one problem with Christmas. The one problem that I have with Christmas is that it didn't originate with God. It's a tradition of man. Ooh. Some of you are like, what? Say what? Huh? The origins of Christmas, if you have a look at them, they go back as far as mankind has been on the earth. It came about that before the time of Jesus walked as a man on the earth, many ancient cultures celebrated the changing of the seasons. You get to this point in, in, in the year, especially in Europe, in the Northern Hemisphere, when winters are hard and dark and cold, that people began to celebrate the winter solstice. This was the shortest day of the year. It comes between like the 21st and 25th, dependent upon, you know, different uh, uh, years. And it's the shortest day of the year. And it turned into a time of pagan celebration with various gods being worshipped. And these celebrations were based on the fact and the knowledge that the winter was half over. Now, if, imagine you, you were living in a time when there was no hot water bottles, there were no electric blankets, there was no central heating, which was probably, you know, in England. Uh, in, in, in Rome, they had central heating, in Constantinople, in Ur of the Chaldees. And, you know, they were a lot more civilized than we, we make them out to be. But imagine that you were in a place and the winter was half over. It was a time to celebrate. And I don't know about you, but according to historians, it's a natural time for a feast. A guy called Philip Shaw um, from Leicester University, he said that in an agricultural society, the harvest work at this time is done for the year. There's nothing left to be done in the fields. So it's a time when you have some time to devote to your religious life, and it's the best time for a festival. It's a good time to get down and party. Huh? It's also a period, he says, when frankly, everyone needs cheering up. You know, you, 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 you're there, you, you, it's dark at night, you, you, you're getting up half hour before you go to bed to try and get a little bit of sunlight so you can go out and work in the fields and you know that it's almost over and you're going to be able to get back to a little bit of normality. Everyone wants to, to party at that time. Are you with me? And the dark days are drawn to a close, he continues. The winter solstice could be lightened with feasts and decorations. Then when you get to the Roman times, they have this 
system of religion and in their system of religion they had all these different types of gods the pantheon of gods they had a god for this and a god for that and a god for this and a god for that and the god of agriculture that they had was called saturn not satan although very similar very very similar saturn like the planet he was the god of agriculture and he had different names according to different peoples the canaanites he was called he was known as baal you heard of that that one baal and he was basically like all of the gods of the pagan peoples. He was a demonic entity, some sort of old Nephilim that had been living or a fallen angel or something. But the god with a small g, not the god of the universe, big G, OG. You know what I mean? The god that we serve is an OG, capital G. But these gods were little g's. Amen. And they celebrated at this time with a winter festival called Saturnalia after their God. And what they would do is in the ancient Roman Empire is that for a week leading up to the winter solstice, they would get down, they would party, they would drink, they would eat to excess. Everyone was equal, there was no crime. You could do whatever you wanted. The, 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 uh, the slave owners would serve the slaves. Everyone was equal, they'd eat together, they'd do that, they'd give gifts. But it was, it was baldy, it was, it was riotous, it was mad, it was manic. It was like Manchester is going to be on New Year's Eve. It was like Glasgow is going to be on Christmas Eve. It is like all of the, uh, how many of you have ever been out on a Christmas Eve, hopefully before you were saved, on a mad night out? Let me see your hands. Huh? Mental, or how many of you have even heard of it if, if you were never of that persuasion? Or you've seen the excess, or you've worked in A&E and you've seen someone come in drunk, dressed as an elf. Huh? Amen. Damaging their elf. You look at them and you go, you ain't going to make it back. Or, you're not going to make it back to Santa tonight, are you? Look at you, how many presents are you going to wrap? But you see it. And it was like that in that day. Saturnalia. And it was also, December the 25th, was also regarded as the birth date of the Far Eastern uh, god called Mithras. Mithras became the god of the Roman legions. He was a warrior. He was the bull slayer. And he was known, check this out, as the son of righteousness and he had died and he'd been resurrected and all of that stuff are you with me and his birthday was celebrated on the 25th at this time they used to decorate their houses they give gifts they gave light they put up lights and then as we go forward in the roman empire you see especially in this country you see, as we start getting invaded, some of you know, most of us in this place, white British, are not white British. We're white Viking. We have, I'm sure I've got a little bit of West Indian in me somewhere. You know what I mean? Huh? Who give me a witness on that one? It's okay. It's all right. Huh? Some of you, you... you you know, white people, you know, you, you, you might have a bit of Asian in you from the Raj or whatever. We're bitsers, man. We've, we've, been in, we've been invaded by everyone. We were invaded by the Romans. We were invaded by the Normans. We were in, the Saxons, the Normans. We were invaded by everyone. We messed up. And everyone that came started bringing their own little traditions and adding them to all of these festivals. The trees came from Germany. The Yule log came with the Saxons. The trees, all of these different things are, are traditions laid up one on top of the other. Huh? But the early church didn't celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ because they didn't feel that they needed to celebrate his birth. They were more concerned with celebrating his death and his resurrection. It never, never, never occurred to them that they should mark out when he was born, the date of his birthday, they didn't used to celebrate that stuff. They didn't celebrate people's birthdays. Are you with me? It wasn't until about 300 years after Christ had been born, lived, died, resurrected, gone back to be with his father, 
that the church became the preeminent religion in the Roman Empire, Christianity. And what happened was there started to be some, some controversy about the person of Jesus Christ. There was all these different things taking place. And a lot of people were coming in saying that Jesus wasn't a real man. He was a spirit. He wasn't a real man. He wasn't the son of God. He wasn't a real man. He wasn't a human. And so what they decided to do is they decided to show that, you know, he was a real man and he actually was born. And you know what? Let's, let's graft it into this Saturnalia thing because we can't get rid of it because even the Christians were celebrating it. And let's graft it in and let's just make it so that on the 25th we celebrate. It started off that we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ was born. And then it became associated that that was the day that he was born. But he wasn't. Amen? Sorry to kill something in you right now. But I'd rather tell you the truth and set you free than for you to be one of those Christians that walks about with your head in the clouds speaking about stuff that you really don't know anything about. Huh? So it was built up. And then the church started to build it up as a spiritual time commemorating Jesus' birth. And... Year on year, it changed, different traditions came and went. You know, it was only in Queen Victoria's day that people started giving Christmas presents at Christmas. Before that, they used to give presents on New Year's Day. They didn't have Christmas trees until she married a German and he brought over a Christmas tree. Britain's never had that. Are you with me? So we have these different traditions. And then you come to today. Here we are today, 2017 in the great city of Manchester. And Christmas today is huge. It's massive. I mean, we can say amen. amen. Huh? Today, there's massive commercial pressure on it. The build-up gets more aggressive. It gets targeted at consumers earlier and earlier we even have something now called black friday where did that come from man that came from america another tradition that has come to us from america black friday we never had black friday now we got black friday black friday super sales i saw a thing on so one of my american friends sent me a thing on uh, facebook he said black friday super sales the doors open and one guy walked in There were no queues because there ain't no sales. There ain't no super sales. All they do in sales is, let me set you free. <laughs> all they do with sales is they get rid of all the old stock from last year that they wouldn't normally get rid of and they tell you that they're selling it to you cheaper so you buy all of the old stuff from last year that they would have had to give away somewhere anyway. They never give you the new stuff. The sales section's over here. And then all the other stuff, new season. Full price, if not more. Right? But you're in, the, you're in the shop and you're walking around minding your own business and all of a sudden you hear, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> it just assaults you. Subtly. I mean, if you get that. You're there, you're doing the shopping, and all of a sudden, someone's singing, it's a beginning to look a lot like Christmas. You're like, it's September. <laughs> Hold up a minute, the sun's out still. Huh? And then you're, you're going to another shop. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. <laughs> Rudolph the red nose ring. <laughs> and then before you know it, you're singing along, and you're, 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 you're starting to prepare for quick. Oh, I might as well get... A Christmas put. It's September, man. <laughs> well, I want to get in there before, before they all go. There's three months. <laughs> Mince pies are out. There's stuff out. You're like, oh, I've got to get this now. I must get it now. Huh? Because you swing from side to side. You go from doing everything on Christmas Eve when you can't get a Christmas put. I've been in stores before where you can't get any brandy butter. Listen, Victory Outreach is okay to have brandy butter, man. 
Ain't no brandy left in it. Huh? It's all right. It's not alcoholic. You ain't going to get drunk, you know, people in, people in a home, you know what I mean? Loads of pots around them. Cream around their mouth and all that. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you getting a picture? How many of you, 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 you've woke up and smelled a coffee about Christmas now? About how commercial it is. Huh? It's Ollie reefs, decorated trees, mistletoe, seasons greetings, seasonal music, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Huh? You want to get out your roll necks and your slippers and you, you buy new pyjamas and men even buy onesies. For Christmas Day and Boxing Day, you're going to get in a onesie. Huh? Vicky threatened to get me a onesie. I, I said I'd look like a Teletubby. <laughs> a big onesie. Santa Claus with his big white beard and his big round tummy and everything that we get that's associated with this, this holiday. And as December moves on, the songs build to a crescendo. You go from those little nice ones to all of a sudden you hear the pogues. It's building you up and then Slade. Huh? And it builds up to a crescendo. And it mixes in, they sneakily mix it in with Frosty the Snowman. And all the kids are getting excited and they're tugging you and they're giving you lists. Putting them in the fire. Huh? And if you're lucky, you might get a little town of Bethlehem. There's a little religious thing stuck in there somewhere. People wear Christmas jumpers. <laughs> you, listen, Christmas Eve service, you've got to wear a Christmas jumper. Please, anything. Christmas jumper or a hat when you come. Christmas Eve, we're having a normal services Sunday. Please, if you're watching online, two services, Christmas Eve, as usual, wear a Christmas jumper, even if you're sitting in your house. Send us pictures of you with your Christmas jumper. We're going to have a prize for the most unique, creative Christmas jumper. We're going to give you a gift for the most unique Christmas outfit <laughs> yeah, everything's going, man. Huh? But the power of it, the pull of it, but the stress of it. And many people get depressed because of it. And the mad thing is, we love it. We love it. If or when. We have enough money to join the excess of it. When you don't, it's the worst Christmas ever. When you do, best Christmas ever. But we need that transformed. We need that madness transformed. Right? Because it's not wrong to celebrate it. The excess part is wrong. But it's the perfect time for a celebration. But it can be so disappointing for so many people who can't join in because they feel excluded because of the excess. You probably heard this song by a guy called Greg Lake. He wrote a song called I Believe in Father Christmas. And it got to number two in 1975 when I was seven. I remember it. Dun, 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 dun. You know that song? Do, 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 do. And you hear it, and it's like, wow, yeah. But he wrote it as a protest against the excess. Some of the words in it are really heavy, you know. He says, they said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth, but instead it just kept on raining. He must have been writing it in Salford. <laughs> a veil of tears for the virgin birth. I remember one Christmas morning, a winter's light and a distant choir and the peal of a bell and that Christmas tree smell and their eyes full of tinsel and fire. That's the good bit of it, isn't it? That's the bit that you remember. But then he goes on, he says, 
They sold me a dream of Christmas. They sold me a silent night. And they told me a fairy story till I believed in the Israelite. And I believed in Father Christmas. And I looked to the sky with excited eyes till I woke with a yawn in the first light of dawn. And I saw him and threw his disguise. Woo! All of a sudden, disappointment creeps in. And then the last verse, he says this. He says, I wish you a hopeful Christmas. I wish you a brave new year. All anguish, pain and sadness. Leave your heart and let your road be clear. They said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. Hallelujah, Noel, be it heaven or hell. The Christmas we get, we deserve. Woo! Because what you put in to something is what you get out. What, what, where, where is our mind at? Where is our heart at? Where is our thinking at around this time? And the thing is, I get this song. I don't know about you. I get this song. When I was a kid, Christmas was simple and it was magical. How many of you remember that? You know, that, 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 that bit where it says, the peal of a bell and that Christmas tree smell and their eyes full of tinsel and fire. It was magical. I used to go around my nan and granddad's house down in the East End and they'd have this old house and they had this old cold rooms and we'd be all frozen up and there'd be a tree and there'd be presents and there'd be, you know, all of the old stuff and fresh mince pies made and the turkey would be cooking slowly in the oven overnight and, you know, all that stuff and the excitement. It's beautiful. And my parents handed down traditions that have been handed down to them, which were a mixture of all sorts of stuff. And every family has their own little traditions, don't they? It was great. It was simple and it was magical. Then as a teen and then as an early adult, it started getting stressful and disappointing. It started becoming more about going out with your mates and making sure you had a ticket for the Christmas Eve uh, bash down at the Boozer or going to a club or making sure you'd done this or you'd done that and going out and coming back and doing all these different things. It became stressful and, and you didn't have the money to buy the presents and you didn't get what you wanted and you wanted this and you wanted that and you were doing this and you were doing that and everything was mental and then it became disappointing. The magic left. Loneliness started to creep in. Lack crept in. Then when I got saved as a new Christian, I started to try and spiritualize it. Some of you know when you're a new Christian, you try and spiritualize everything. Huh? It's not Xmas. It's Christmas. Don't take the Christ out of Christmas. <laughs> Spiritualizing it. Huh? Now I see it for what it is. It's a traditional festival that can be enjoyed if it's done right and everything's put in its right box. But you don't have to feel condemned about it. A lot of people feel condemned to Christians, feel condemned about celebrating Christmas. Some people think it's something it's not. Some people build it up into something it's not. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 says, Don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink, for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. Then he says this, watch this. For these rules are only shadows of reality, of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. See, the problem with Christmas is that the one we celebrate today promises a lot more than it delivers. So what's the promise of Christ? Our Scripture that we just read says it all. There are shadows, there is reality. And Christ is the reality and substance of every hope and desire of our hearts. Santa Claus is not the one that brings the best gifts. Jesus is. Because Jesus always delivers what he promises. Have you ever, especially today with, you know, Amazon, eBay, you know, online shopping have you ever had the misfortune of buying a present for someone for Christmas or for their birthday or a card that didn't get there on time because the post was late something happened or it was mad let me see your hands huh it didn't deliver what it promised when but Jesus always does and here's the thing don't throw the baby out with a bathwater. Whenever Jesus was born, it was just as the Bible promised. Isaiah promised hundreds of years before it happened in Isaiah 7, 14, 
that a virgin would give birth. And we see that that happened. The gospel writers tell us that's what happened. We read that originally. And it tells us how and where he was born. He was born where he was supposed to be born. Around Bethlehem. He was born how he was supposed to be born. Through a virgin's womb. He was born to people he was meant to be born to. That were direct descendants of King David. Mary and Joseph were direct descendants of King David. So when Jesus was born, he was born into royalty. He was born as a Jew. But because he didn't have a human father, he was born without sin, which is key. An angel announced his birth. The reason that Jesus was born is key. He was born to become the sacrifice, the only sacrifice for sin. And it had to be a man to pay the price. It couldn't be an angel. It had to be a man to pay the price for sin because it was a man that brought sin in, Adam. But the problem was it had to be a man without sin to pay the price for sin. And there was no man born of woman up to that point or up to this point other than Jesus Christ that was born without sin because sin is passed down genetically. It's in your genes. Huh? It had to be a man without sin himself who could die to pay the price for Adam's sin. That's why Jesus couldn't have an earthly father. That's why it had to be a virgin. It had to be around Bethlehem because that was the royal place. It had to be from that lineage. The promise of Jesus then is the same now. Forgiveness of sin. How many of you have ever sinned? Oh, don't put your hands up. Because some of you wouldn't and then that would mean you did. Because you lied. Huh? We've all sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. What gift? Forgiveness. Reconnection with God, the creator. The connection that was broken because mankind wanted to get downloads from somewhere else other than from direct revelation from God. They wanted to get it from a tree. When they already had it from God. Some people would rather Google their answer than get down on their knees and ask God for their answer. Still today we sin. Recon reconnection with God. Peace. How many of you have ever, how many <laughs> you've ever had, you've lost your peace? Come on now, you've had your peace taken out of you. Huh? It's gone. Someone's come, took your peace, robbed your peace. He says, peace comes back that surpasses all understanding joy Woo! not looking at much right now <laughs> people are like just I wish I'd never taken the blue pill <laughs> put me back in the matrix man you know I want to live in denial Everything's all right and what I'm doing is okay and God understands and I'm going to go to heaven even though I don't believe in Jesus, don't follow him, don't love him, don't want nothing to do with him. What about freedom? I'm talking about true freedom. The freedom to do right. Not just the freedom to do what you want. The freedom to do right. Since I got born again, I'm free to do right, not bound to do wrong. Are you with me? Beautiful. And joy and peace and all that stuff. The angel messenger promised it. He said, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, Luke 2, 10, 11. Look at the promise. Good news, great joy, salvation, all wrapped up in a person that we can understand and learn from and follow. Someone we can get to know. Maybe today, maybe this Christmas, maybe this is going to be the season where it's your time for salvation or maybe a friend or a family member's time to receive this gift of salvation. It's okay. My dad was born again on Christmas Eve in a church service in 1995 that I took him to. 
after I'd been saved in the July. I was struggling through, but there was a church service. It was Christmas. And because it was Christmas, he said that he would come to church with me. And the man gave the address. And when he said, does anyone want to give their life to Jesus, put your hand up. My dad put his hand up. Wonderful. He's been... He's one of the longest serving members of his church now, 22 years. Amazing. Incredible. Maybe this is the season. And it's because of the promise of Christ. Because the truth is that Jesus delivers everything he promises. Lastly, the possibilities of Christmas. How many of you want to know a few possibilities? Huh? There are many, but here's a few. It's possible to deepen your faith at this time. See, here's the key. Some people say that they believe in Jesus and they only go to church at Easter, Christmas, when there's a christening, when there's a wedding or a funeral. That's the only time that they would walk through the doors of a church is at a special time. But the thing is this. When you decide to worship God and remember Christ, not because it's a special time, but because it's what you do all the time. When you have that understanding, it don't matter whether it's Christmas or not. That then leaves you free not to worry about having to do some special religious observance at Christmas because it's what you do every single day, every single week, every single month of the year because Christ is a reality to you, not just at Christmas. I must at Christmas. Then you can deepen your relationship when you make that decision. Then it's possible to survive the season debt free. Everyone's perking up right now. There's two ways of doing it buy nothing. Amen. <laughs> The key is, this is the key, watch this. This is years of experience. The key is, don't rob God of your tithes and offerings to pay Santa his Xmas profits. You know how many people, shall I say that again? Shall I say it one more time? You can tweet this. Notice I said Xmas as well. Don't rob God of your tithes and offerings to pay Santa his Xmas profits. Give as usual. Give. Are you with me? Some people withhold so that they can get an extra Christmas pudding. Shut up. Huh? Give as usual. In fact, give a little bit more. And then what will happen is, God will start to take care of the rest of your finances. You know, people, people hate pastors saying this. It's true. Try it. Are you with me? We give as usual, man. We pay God first. And this year, all of our presents are done. They're done. They're, they're, they're gone. And we're blessed. But we, there's temptation to withhold. But who's getting the profit from that? Are you with me? Then it's possible to build relationships. If you focus on what matters most, the people you love. Watch this. Some of the people that I come in contact with hate Christmas because they can't give the gift to the one they love that they want to give. They feel disappointed. They feel wretched. They start getting depressed. You know the two biggest gifts that you can give to anyone? Are gifts that money can't buy. Love and time. I don't know about you, but time is the biggest gift that you can ever give anyone. You give someone your time, they're valuable. Because money you can get back. Love you can receive back. Time is gone once you've invested it. Give someone time. Deepen a relationship. Build a relationship. 
take time this Christmas to connect or reconnect with someone. Huh? Connect with someone for the first time. It might be that you're building a lifelong friendship with someone. It might be that you saved someone's life. Years ago, before I was a pastor, I was running an evangelism team in London. And I went out at this time of year on the streets of Camden. In the summer, we had teams of 20, 30 people would come out. In the cold in December, this night, there was just me. I was walking down Camden High Street and I had some flyers for the church. And I remember this guy walking towards me. He looked a bit weird. He was dark, but darker than usual. He looked like something in a Snoopy cartoon with a big cloud over his head. He was a gothic looking bod with a bit of makeup on and stuff. Not the sort of person that you would usually go and speak to about Christ because you would expect a confrontation. So they're normally very antichrist in their opinions. But something had me go up to him at this time, taking my time out in the cold on my own, no one else around. And I went and reached out to this guy. I said, brother, I said, I want to tell you, you got a minute. I want to tell you some stuff. You got a minute. I want to take you. He stopped. I started to speak to him. I said, yeah, I'm... I'm a Christian, man. I want to tell you, God loves you. What? No one loves me. What are you talking about? God loves you, man. I'm here. I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you. Cut a long story short, he'd come from somewhere down south. I said, you from here? He went, no, I'm from Basingstoke or somewhere. So what are you doing here then? He said, I came here tonight to kill myself. Wow. Cut a long story short, we managed to work some stuff out with him, got him in a place of safety. But time. Connect with someone. After that, I followed up on him and made sure that he was safe and he was secure. Time. What about a family member that maybe you haven't spoke to for a while? What about a friend from back in the day? Connect, reconnect. Just a bit of time, man. It might be just what they need. And it might be that it becomes a habit and the thing that you've always wanted becomes a reality. Then it's possible to enjoy yourself this Christmas. It's possible. You don't have to get drunk. You don't have to get fat. You don't have to get arrested. Huh? People are getting arrested for all sorts of stuff. We found out that a bloke was helping someone out who was set alight and he's got fire all over him and the police came and arrested him. He said, what are you arresting me for? He said, waving firearms about. It's possible to have fun. It's possible to laugh. I'm going to laugh at some of you dressed up. You're going to laugh at me with the Christmas jumper that I have. It's possible to sit and enjoy each other's company. Watch random TV. It's possible to enjoy yourself. Just be balanced. Remember, nothing to excess. Understand, this is the truth. You either play now and pay later. Hello. Your Christmas jumper might not fit you after Christmas. Well... You know that, that, that dress you got for New Year's Eve? Woo! After Christmas Day and Boxing Day, you might, be, you might be praying that someone bought you some magic knickers for Christmas. Can I say that? Be balanced. There are consequences to our decisions. So don't buy things you don't need to impress people who don't care. Huh? Don't get someone a random gift for the sake of it. I'm only going to give it to someone else. Don't get me aftershave. Socks. Please. Lego or a Nerf gun. 
<laughs> we want to have big Nerf guns, man. Enjoy yourself. It's possible to be a true representative of Christ this Christmas. Invite someone to your house if you can. Huh? Have dinner with us, man. Where, where are you at Christmas? No, don't be on your own. Come round. Come and join us. And if you can't do that, invite them to church. Come, come to the church, man. You know why? Because church is a place of connection. That's his job. The job of a church is to be a place of connection. It's a place where people come and connect. They get refueled. They get filled up. They find new friends. How many of you have ever found some really good friends in church? Huh? That you wouldn't have met anywhere else. Come on now. You've got gangster friends that you would never have had. <laughs> Ex-gangster friends, yeah? That you would never have had. <laughs> Some of you know doctors. The only doctor you knew is the one who used to prescribe you methadone. Now they're in the Bible study with you. You go around each other's houses. Lastly, it's possible to be content and not compromise. You don't have to get involved in a whole hype thing to enjoy the beauty of the season and to give Christ glory. Don't compare. Avoid comparing your Christmas with friends, with neighbours, with the people you see on TV. Don't, don't compare because the enemy of contentment is comparison. And then the temptation to compromise because of a tradition that God didn't begin will be under control because the promise of Christ makes it possible to overcome the problems of this world. So may your Christmas season be transformed. May you thrive and not just survive. Give love and time to someone and be the Christian you desire to be in every season, not just this one. Come and stand to your feet. Just begin to thank the Lord in advance for this season. Thank Him for the gift of salvation. Thank Him for joy. Thank Him for peace and forgiveness and reconciliation. Thank Him for what it is that you're going to be able to give this Christmas. Thank Him. Thank Him that He is who He says He is. He did what He said He would do and He wants to be a blessing in you and through you. Take two minutes to thank Him right now. this every single service from now up until the end of the year every service we have from now to the end of the year I'm going to make a, a, a call for salvation if there's anyone that does not know forgiveness freedom they don't know Jesus Christ they haven't experienced I'm not talking about this little thing in your head I'm talking about you know that you know man that you have met the risen saviour and your life has been transformed You've been changed. You've been forgiven. You feel clean. You've been set free. You're, you've changed direction. You know that you're facing forward into your future and your destiny. You're not facing back, looking at regret and destruction and darkness and damnation, but you're looking forward. You know that you are. If you haven't experienced that, and you know deep inside yourself that you need to, that you're a sinner, but there's something that's taking place and that you say, you know what, today is the day I'm, I'm going to give my life to Christ. Why wait? Why, why, why wait any longer? Why wait another moment? Trying to fit in some more sin before you have to stop? Unbelievable. Stop it. He wants you to belong and believe. Then you'll start to behave. But do you believe? So all over this place, when you close your, your eyes, 
Father, I pray if there is just one soul in this service or the next or the next or the next or the next that says, Jesus, I want to be your child. I want to be forgiven. I, I, I pray that you forgive me. I want to get saved. I want to change. I want to be made new. If that's you in this place right now, with every, every eye closed, every head bowed, I want you to lift up your hand and just acknowledge that that's you. If there's any one person in this place that says, I want Jesus to be my saviour right now. There's one right there. Anyone else? Anyone else that says, I want Jesus to be my saviour? Anyone else? There's one. Anyone else in this service? There's one. Anyone else? Jesus, be my Lord, be my saviour. Be my friend. All right, brother, come up. Come up, bring him up. Guy there, bring him up. Bring him up. Come up here. Come up, stand here. Just come and stand there. Come, come and stand with me. The pastor's there. Nathaniel, stand there, brother. Everyone. Everyone, look this way. This brother, I had a phone call from a friend of mine from Amsterdam who was in London a week ago on a book signing. He's got a book out. He phoned me up. He said, Pastor Paul, it's Joshua. I've met this guy. He's come to this book signing that I've got. My friend is an ex-gang member from Amsterdam. He's got a book. He's a Christian. He said, I've got this guy here. He said, he's a drug addict. He needs help. Can you help him? So I took the call. I spoke to him. Told him what we do. I said, come up, man. Here he is. Here he is. Slightly the worst for wear. It's a bit messed up. And he deserves to be from his lifestyle. Huh? But here he is. He was me once. Nathaniel, you want to make Jesus your saviour? Help me pray for Nathaniel right now. Reach out your hands. And also, we have our beautiful Scottish sister. Amen. It's okay. I want everyone to pray. Speak out this prayer. The prayer doesn't save you. The person of Jesus Christ that you're speaking to saves you. He is the Savior. The prayer just connects you to Him and through Him. We are reconnected to the Father in heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't deserve salvation. We receive salvation. It is the gift of God, not of words, lest anyone should boast. It is by grace, through faith. Declare this right now. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Speak it out loud. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you came to earth to pay the price for my sin. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. And I need your forgiveness. Forgive me. I turn to you as my Saviour. No one else will do it. Nothing else can do it. But I believe that you can. Forgive me, Jesus. Set me free, Jesus. Deliver me from every single thing that has harmed me, Jesus. 
Fill me with your life. And give me the future that you promised for me. Save me, Jesus. And now thank Him. Just take a moment to thank Him. I'm all over this place. Lord, we thank You. the word of the Lord you've had a little bit of truth how many of you that's cleared up a few things helped you out in some way amen let me see your hands if 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 any